When it comes to evangelizing and evangelizing effectively, we can think of a lot of things that would go into doing that well. But one of the most important things in order to spread the faith well is also the most neglected, or one of the most neglected, and that is listening well. In order to share the faith fruitfully and effectively, we actually need to be able to listen. Listening skills are essential for a missionary disciple of Jesus Christ, and that's what we're going to be talking about today on Ignition. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Dr. Chris Bergwald, and we want to set your faith ablaze so that you might live the adventure that comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Before we get into today's topic, we want you to know that, as always, we love listener feedback. So if you've got questions about today's episode, or if you have ideas for future episodes, please contact us. The easiest way to do so is by email, and the address is rcrans at sf. <laughs> Oh, ignition at sfcatholic.org. Again, ignition at sfcatholic.org. Don't worry, I won't get anything. I was just checking to see if you were listening, <laughs> I'm Renee. Listening. See you. Trying I did not there. to distract you. Not, you, know, you know, I appreciated that. Make funny faces or anything I was, like that. You know, oftentimes I'll say, and the address is. Uh huh. And you fill what? it in. Yeah. And sometimes they are cran, but I, I, it's I'm public. Listening. It's on the website. It is on the so website. It's not yes. like I gave out secret no. information. Her social security number, on the other hand, is one two. If three, you know that, four, I'm five, terrified. Six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, <laughs> good luck. Definitely not. Good that. luck. <laughs> you might find somebody <laughs> with that one, but I no, will be, be shocked. Me. <laughs> uh, who the heck are we, Renee? Renee. Ha ha ha! Who am I? Who are you? Yes. Uh, you are Dr. Chris Bergwald, the Director of Adult Formation. No. Of Formation for Adults. No. <laughs> Casey, pop up the door third so I can see it. <laughs> wow. You know what? You keep changing it. I haven't changed it. But you, I don't... Changed it since I've been here. So Yeah, once. <laughs> uh, <laughs> director of... Formation. Close. D- I'm something. the director of discipleship formation. Okay. What else? Oh, you want more? You want like, per- like, okay, he hangs out in the hallway and in- <laughs> instructs oh, everybody on what actually, to do. You deserve this. This, this was a bad <laughs> idea. Chris is our hall monitor. Yep. Pay He's plus, pay very, plus very good at it. Highly yes. Effective. Yes. Oh, um, great. You, you are married to Jermaine. Oh, there we go. From Minnesota originally. Yep. yep. Uh, you have five kids. Yeah, good. Um, uh, yeah, you yeah. go to Saint Lambert. Yep, he signed Super Bowls. Yeah, great, good, 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 good. Got a few Other things. than I can't believe this. I'm, how often am I on the show? Your show, and you don't know my title. I'm, I'm vexed. I'm terribly vexed. I feel like yeah. Movie, I just movie reference, Casey. Vexed. <laughs> Gladiator, Ooh. come on. Oh, yeah, it's okay. All right. Well. Uh, Renee Kranz is across the table from me. Mm-hmm. Renee is the director of communication with the Diocese of Sioux Falls. Renee is originally from the Watertown area, mm-hmm. Castlewood to be specific. Mm-hmm. Um, she was point guard um, her senior year of high school. For and my junior year, and but junior I was. Year, uh, Didn't do anybody any guard. good, but I did. Uh, they, they won a game. Uh, won a game in two years. In two years, yeah. So. Hey, Castlewood uh, peeps. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Ray's been in the diocese for what, five, five years five in years. May. In May. Oh. Mm-hmm. So this month, as people are hearing this, it's April. Five years. As people as are, people are hearing, hearing this. this. Sorry, I don't know when your stuff's gonna I be posted. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I know. Told you told me a little you. bit ago. I know. <laughs> but You're you right. weren't listening. <laughs> This is a perfect episode for me. So <laughs> it's actually no, it's it's less about listening and remembering. No, I know. That's I, my I problem. Know. That is uh, that that'll be another episode. <laughs> um, so the, the as you know, uh, Renee, the way one of the ways that we talk about missionary discipleship in our diocese is specifically well around what we describe what we call the four areas of formation, in order to be. Um, a fruitful, effective missionary disciple, that we have to be attentive to four different areas of formation. Mm-hmm. Um, all are necessary, um, but none of them are sufficient by themselves. Right. You need to, to be a, a well-rounded disciple. You're attentive to spiritual formation, so my own personal relationship in prayer mm-hmm. with God, um, and you can include liturgical prayer, the sacraments as well in that. Um, secondly, intellectual formation. How well do I know the, the, the teachings of faith, which tell us about God himself? Mm-hmm. 
um, and uh, who we are and uh, our relationship with him. Uh, third, what's third? Uh, well, I know human formation, but I don't think that's the third. It one. is actually the third. Okay, one. all right. Um, so we'll come back to human formation because what we're talking about today kind of fits under there. Although it is, as I frankly in the opening, um, the, the 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 introduction to, the, to this episode, I. I talked about the importance of listening when it comes to sharing the faith. Mm-hmm. So apostolic formation mm-hmm. is the fourth area of formation. That's my ability to be, whether I'm a layman, uh, religious, or uh, ordained, to be a, a quote-unquote apostle, a small right. a apostle, right. uh, sharing the faith. Right. Um, we've all been sent to share the faith um, based on the gifts that we've been given in our state and life and so on. So um, listening, again, I do think it's effective for, it. Is, I don't think, it is effective Um for proclaiming the faith well, but I actually want to in, start by co- situ- situating it in the context of the third area of formation, which is human formation, okay. which I think is the least, I think, I think most people could guess what the other three areas of formation were. At least two of them. At least two of them. Yeah. The apostolic, the spirit, think, No, the, spiritual and the... Uh, intellectual. Uh, yeah, I think those two most people could guess. Yeah. Okay. The apostolic, they may or may not take that pick that word. Sure, right, right. Yeah. Um, but human, I think, is... Probably the the most like wait, what does that mean? And basically, it's 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 you can summarize it in all sorts of ways. Um, your colleague, uh, leader of my department, Father Scott Trainer, years ago, I've said this many times publicly. Father Scott, when I was talking with Father Scott about because th- these come out of the the origin of thinking about formation along the lines of these four areas is actually as uh, it came out of the context of seminary formation, mm-hmm. formation of seminarians right. as future right. priests. Um, and Father Scott uh, ran a seminary mm-hmm. for a number of years. So I thought he'd be a good, like, Father Scott, how do you explain human formation? And he pretty quickly said, human formation is about being not weird. <laughs> or not being weird, either way. Uh, so I don't know if any of us can accomplish that. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself, Renee. I'm pretty uh, weird I've mastered sometimes. that. Uh, I, oh, it depends on what he means by weird. Oh, I, so so the a, a bit more formal way to put it is, my humanity, so how I am, should be a bridge from other people to Jesus ah. instead of an obstacle, sure. instead of a moat. <laughs> you want to be a bridge and not a moat. You don't, don't want people to fall across. into the muck. Let them walk uh, you across. You want to walk across. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, even more, to put, put more meat in the bones, um, human formation is about me growing in self-awareness mm-hmm. or self-knowledge. Um, so understanding myself and coming to know um, blind spots that mm-hmm. I have because mm-hmm. blind spots. To say, the hard thing about blind spots is you don't know they're there. Right. So it's um, just hard to be honest about them. Yeah. Well, to that, yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, so growing. So I can. So self knowledge or self awareness, so that I can possess myself. Okay. That I can like like own myself, mm-hmm. so that I can give myself away. Okay. So self awareness, self knowledge. Self possession and then self gift. Give okay. myself away, and that's where it kind of bleeds into then apostolic formation. But um, it starts with all those things. Um, and, and so another way to look at this, it's just about maturing, being a mature human being, right? Um, affective, so emotional maturity. Um, we can't do too much about our physical maturity, but it's it's about taking care of ourself in every dimension of who we are, just as a human being. That is part of what it means to be um, a well-rounded, fruitful missionary disciple. Right. Uh, like, so in the context, sorry, seminarians uh, and former seminarians, a.k.a. priests, just to pick on you a little bit. Like, um, <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, all right. I was a teenager once. Um I've got a teenage son. I was going to say, were you much like your teenage son? Because I can uh, totally picture that. Carl says, yeah, uh, <laughs> yes, I was someone like Carl. Um, teenage boys, you know, let's see. How do we do this without throwing anybody under the bus? Okay. Carl, the, get ready. No, not, not, not talking <laughs> okay. about Carl. Uh, like you have to remind teenage boys to take care of themselves, yeah. even when it comes to like personal hygiene. Sure. Did you brush your teeth? Th- I don't say that to Carl, to be clear. I don't say to Carl, <laughs> did you brush your teeth today? But have you brushed your teeth? Have you showered in the last month? You know, all those things like that. But we, this is part of what it means to mature mm-hmm. as a human being, especially for the male portion of the species. <laughs> um, wow. I can speak to that because I know it. Um, because if we're not attentive to that, our humanity can be an obstacle 
between others and Jesus. Mm -hmm. So if you're weird as a priest, if I'm weird as a layman, I'm not, it's not going to be helpful. Like in a way that I can do something about. Like right, we do have right, right. idiosyncrasies and there are certainly ways in which I am weird. Yep. I, you, know, might I have a, you might have a weird laugh right, or, right, you know, exactly. whatever. Things like that. Yeah. So this is, that's what human formation is about. And there are a lot of things that fall under the ambit of human formation that are really important. Um, I recently did an ep- a solo episode of, uh, not, not the, a few episodes just on the importance of reasoning thinking mm-hmm. well i think you got you you reminded me we did one a long time done, ago a, a, yeah. a long time ago um speaking well not necessarily public we're not all called to public speak right but am i can i articulate my thoughts mm-hmm. that's an important human skill yeah to have to foster to cultivate listening well mm-hmm. is definitely an important human skill yes for the purposes of missionary discipleship, but simply as a human being. Mm-hmm. So because of that, I mean, that's a long introduction to explain, though, why the heck on a show about um, growing in relationship with God and living that adventure and sharing with others, why are we talking about listening mm-hmm. well? Because it's part of what it means to be a well-rounded human, which is essential to missionary discipleship. Yeah, yeah. So what? So. I've talked a lot. Um, and you, what, are, what are your initial thoughts, Renee, on when it comes to like listening well, listening skills? Well, I would say that it's actually really important in your relationship with God, too. Oh, yeah. Because we, all, we <laughs> often do an awful lot of talking to yes. God yes. and not a lot of listening. Yep. Um, and I feel like it seems to me like most people, when they actually stop and listen for a little bit, you'll hear something yep. <laughs> from God. Yep. Um. And it might be a tiny little whisper. It might be, I believe Father Scott has a story where he about got knocked off his feet with the response from God at one point. So, yeah, to me, it's it's about both listening to other our other fellow humans, yep, but also listening to God. Absolutely, and especially when it comes to listening to God, and that's this part of prayer. So yeah. um, that's a way we're also fitting spiritual formation. Yep. Um, yep. What about what about the the human to human part of it? Any Initial thoughts, observations. Yeah, I think we you. just don't. I think we don't listen very well. Most of the time, um, when people are talking to us, we're really not listening. We're really thinking about the thing we want to say. Um, usually, pretty quickly after they stop, start talking because they'll say something, and you're like, "Ooh, ooh, I got to think of what I'm going to say next," and and you're pretty checked out. And then they stop, and you start talking, and you probably didn't even hear what they just said. Yep. Yep. So it's a. It's a huge problem, I think. So that's the, there. Um, there's something that's called listening to understand mm-hmm. versus listening to respond. Yeah. yeah. And that second kind of listening, which is what you just described to me, that's actually not really listening. No. For the reason that you said, you you've mostly tuned out. Yeah. Now some of us, like I, some of us have the ability to sort of replay the tape. You know, where, right. where I, you right. could, I cannot, you could, <laughs> <laughs> it's something I cannot You could be do. talking and I could be listening and en- I'm enough. formulating my response, but I'm listening uh, enough where if you said, did you, did you hear what I just said? Right. Oh yeah. You just said da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. But 80% of my mental po- focus right there, 20% was on sort of transcribing what you're saying. 80% though was me formulating my response. Okay. That's not real listening. Right. Uh, and I think you're absolutely right that yeah. we, even those of us, because I, 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 I like to think of myself as a pretty good listener. Mm-hmm. Jermaine, my wife. Uh, she may disagree. She might disagree. I, <laughs> I think Jermaine would say, I'm a good listener. Prob- she probably would say, I'm not as good as I think I am. <laughs> that, that, I, think we, I think that can uh, go to all of us. Because I will say that um, in the times when I have stepped into the office of Dr. Bergwald and we've had a, chat about something you're pretty good at listening and hearing the thing so yeah yeah Yeah. i say thank you so i um it's important it's not the same so so i want to talk about listening to respond in particular um it's important but even because it's important we need to do it more but i think some people renee might be like okay how yeah it it, no and then in one way some listeners or viewers might be like well, what do you mean how? Well, you just do it. Okay, if it were that easy. <laughs> yes. If it were. Th- no, no, maybe it is that. Is it maybe. Well, what do you think? Is this just a matter of like, no, just do it. 
Just be Nike. Just do it. No. Um, or, or, or why, okay, why not? I think there are some hurdles we have to get over. One of them would be um, we have to wor- not worry about ourselves sounding smart and having a response to everything and no dead air and, you know, things like that. Like, like I think there's this idea that whatever we say is the most important thing, so we've got to figure out mm. what we're going to say next. Yep. So there's things we have to like come to grips with ourselves about ourselves about our own importance yep and then and and come to realize them and understand ourselves be self-aware about it and then we can then we can start doing the things that you're just talking about you actually listen to someone yep because you can set aside those things this is it's actually sometimes it is a challenge for me in this setting with you doing ignition to listen to you all not because you're, but it's it's a challenge for me to have to to concentrate on listening to what you're saying, so I can respond after, knowing that my response might not be perfect because sure. I'm listening to you the yeah. whole time. Yep, yep. And, and you. So if frankly, I sound dumb, that's why. <laughs> There's your expression, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I'm dumb. Um, why is Cran Sullivan so dumb? That's what it is. Uh, I'm listening yeah. really well. Um, <laughs> In your defense, you know the way that we do this show, and it's the same on Catholic Views. But there, you're more of the. I mean, I'm not the interviewer here. The way that you are, right. on Catholic Views. Right. But the way that we do the show, I, I want it to be a conversation. Yeah. So that that does, frankly, make it difficult because you know that at a certain point. So Renee, what do you think? You can ask me something. Well, yeah. So I like, and I. I it's not like you could say. Well, can you give me like five minutes right. to think about that? Let's have some dead air for yeah. a little while. <laughs> that doesn't. <laughs> so to be ready on the spot, that, that is a particular challenge. It is. Um, it, but but that happens in real life too because people don't like quiet and yeah. silence and, and dead air yep. between each other. Yep, that's true. So You know, on that point, by the way, um, one of the best teachers for me in that was um, Bishop Paul Swain, God rest his soul, who passed away a couple years ago mm-hmm. because meetings with Bishop Swain. Um, were you ever in a meeting with Bishop I Swain? was not. Bishop would, he like if there were something to ponder, uh, something like if you asked him a question, he'd think about his answer. Right then and there. Right then and there. Mm-hmm. And not, sometimes he might have a quick answer. Yeah. But, if it, but he, he was completely comfortable like that. Like, and, and I'm not going to do it even, even longer, but we can't do that because of radio. Right. <laughs> um, he was completely comfortable with there being, quote unquote, dead air in a meeting if he wanted to give something, if he felt like, no, I, I need to think about that a right. little bit. Right. It wouldn't be like 10 minutes. Right. But it'd be to the point where for most people who haven't experienced it, it, it'd feel a little uncomfortable and yeah. awkward. Well, and I feel like it's even hard for us to think about it in those contexts at those moments because our minds are... Yep. are running with other things and like, oh, these people are waiting on me and oh, I have to come up with something really quick. And so you're really not fully free in your own head to think about the thing that the person just said. Right. Absolutely. So I think that that's, um, and, and to me, as you're, as you're talking, as I was listening, listening. to respond, uh, <laughs> I, that, I, I would see that especially sort of in a a work context yeah. where you're, you're having a meeting mm-hmm. and in a meeting I do, you know, my pride's coming into play. Like, so I'm not really listening to Renee's <laughs> idea cause I've got to have a, an idea and I want my, my idea to be the best idea. To, mm-hmm. So for everything, I'm you prove my worth. Right. All that exactly. Stuff, yeah. What about, so I think you're right about that. Um, so basically quit that. Mm-hmm. Just listen to Renee mm-hmm. and her great idea. If you need to make a little note, my idea, like whatever it is so that you can, all right, when Renee is done, yeah, um, I'm gonna. I want to listen to what she's saying. Yeah, um, maybe have a, a a tweak or that. Okay, I was I was thinking this. Yeah, and you um, could write down just like a one word reminder for yourself, exactly, real quick, exactly. right there. Just as a little, uh, what do I do about that? Yeah, because the, in, in that context, the goal, of course, uh, the, the way that um, that our offices work, the way that we in the departments that we communications discipleship and evangelization and the bishop's leadership team that you're on when we're in meetings we're about and we're trying to problem solve we want to come we want the best idea right. to surface right. well i i need to be paying attention to what renee is saying mm-hmm. in order to as, as part of this discussion about what is and everybody else in the right. room as to well. discern the best exactly. idea. yeah okay what about personally though so I think you're I think you're right pride but I don't think that's the issue. So why is it that sometimes and 
unfortunately, Jermaine would be all too familiar with this reality. <laughs> Jermaine's talking and uh huh, uh huh. It's never happened uh-huh. in my house. I don't now, know I'm why sure, it's happening I'm in your sure, house. I'm sure it's never happened between Ryan and me. <laughs> so why, what do, you, what do you think, so that could be a spouse, could be a friend. So outside, mm-hmm. so more of the personal context, why don't we listen to understand? I think it could be familiarity with each other. That would be one guess. Um, you hear the other person's voice a lot and you're just like, eh. <laughs> I did right. not say let's that. Right. No, right. But, I mean, familiarity let's, with someone. Yeah. They could be. So I'm, I am going to pick on Carl here. Okay. My son. Um, Carl is so like both of his parents, um, but certainly like his dad. What well, both Jermaine. Carl gets fascinated by certain things mm-hmm. and very much. Uh, maybe Jermaine could be this way. That's me. I'm going to have to ask her that. What do you think about that? But I know for me. I could, when I get fascinated with something because of my extrovertedness, and Carl shares that with me as well, I want to talk to other people about mm-hmm. it. And but to be honest, I don't. I want to tell you about. I don't really want to talk to you about with you about. You don't it. really care what I have to say. I want to tell you <laughs> about it. So Jermaine puts up with me and some of my um, technology like oh, kicks boy. that I'll get on. <laughs> it tends to be around cell phone plans and cell phone carriers. Oh my gosh, I heard of this carrier. I know it's totally random. For Carl, it's Fortnite. Oh, it's sure. been Fortnite. Yep. So Carl, Carl, if he can get his the attention, and he can, when he has mom or dad's attention, um, a lot of times, like he, if there's something really cool he's discovered in the the online kind of world of Fortnite, he'll start talking about it, and talking about it, and talking about it. And as a parent, you're supposed to love your child. Are you bored. <laughs> <laughs> And Carl, and, and listen. Poor Carl. I, poor Carl. Carl. I'm so sorry. But I, but I, I, I'm totally get like I know he recognizes. Listen, mom, dad. It's, 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 I know you don't care, but I, I gotta talk. But about I want to. I, I want to <laughs> talk about this. So I know that you don't care. So I'm okay. Here's the, here here here's the ooh, ooh, the convicting thing for me. Do I love my son? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, if I love my son. That's a, this, this, it doesn't mean I have to love Fortnite as much as he does. <laughs> but do I, but, but if he's excited about something, if I love him, again, that doesn't mean that I need to listen for him to go on ad nauseum about Fortnite. <laughs> it doesn't mean I have to share his enthusiasm about Fortnite. But if he's excited about this and if I love him, I should stay engaged in the conversation. Right. If I love cell phone plants, Jermaine, gosh darn it, should stay engaged. I, I have to talk to Jermaine about this because this is bizarre. I, it's a, she'll, oh, tell me about it, Renee. It sure is. Uh, I, 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 again, not necessarily like for hours on end, but do I take an interest in the person, whether it's a right. spouse or a child or a sibling or a close friend? If, if I really take an interest in them, then again, I don't need to completely share the enthusiasm for their hobby, but I should be interested in it. Yeah. I should like, if I'm really, if I'm being selfless with my time, because I, for me, that's what it is. No, I want to be doing something else right now. I could be reading a really good theology. Sure, I want to be Instead looking up some cell phone plans. To, <laughs> apparently. Um, but I'm being selfish with my time. Right. I'm not... Self awareness, self possession, self gift. I'm not giving mm-hmm. myself. I'm not giving my time. I'm not giving my attention to my son mm-hmm. when he's telling me about this thing that he's really mm-hmm. excited about. Yeah. Uh, again, and, and Carl knows this. Like, there's a, there's a line, right? I mean, <laughs> not an hour, son. Not an hour. <laughs> Maybe a few minutes. But I think that's I think that's part of what it is. Yeah. Is frankly, I'm being selfish with my time yeah. and my attention. Yeah. I mean, that's totally true. Um. So again, what do we do about that, Renee? <laughs> hey, this was your idea. <laughs> so so I, there are a couple of things that I'm excited. I definitely, I do think, I think I can listen well, um, but I don't always do it. I don't always do it. So I, I, I so some, just some tips. A, uh, pray. Mm-hmm. Say a prayer that you would recognize the time when you're not being attentive, mm-hmm. when you're not listening to understand, you're listening to respond, or you're not listening at all. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, B, in the moment when you recognize that, say a prayer. Lord, help me to help me to mm-hmm. stay mm-hmm. on track. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but I, I I do think a lot of this comes down to so the work context pride like no yeah. let me just pay attention to Renee's mm-hmm. idea the home context no let me listen to Carl um, I'm going to because I love I love Renee and her ideas I love Carl and his passion mm-hmm. for whatever so I really do, this is part of what it means to love our neighbor. Mm-hmm. In, in, in my opinion. Like, hey, it's just not all about you all the it's time. It's not all about you. <laughs> so if you struggle, like so many things, like I don't know how to change this. Well, ask the Lord. Lord, help me to be a better listener. Mm-hmm. Help me, seriously, if, people, <laughs> listeners, viewers, help me to be a, Lord, help me to be a better listener. If you really struggle with it, you've tried and tried and tried and tried. Ask the one who has the power to change that in you. And I would say ask more than once. Because, oh, yeah. Because oh, the yeah. more often you do that, the more often it's going to be at you, front of awareness for you yep. when you're in a conversation with someone maybe you don't want to pay attention to the conversation right. Absolutely. so yeah if you do it often then yep. it'll i think it would get better yep amen so I, I do want to transition briefly to talk about the importance of listening when it comes to sharing our faith yeah. so with the context of evangelization so i i used to get uh, and sometimes i still can get annoyed when people talk about we need to be a listening church I would get annoyed, like, no, we have the gospel of Jesus Christ to share with people. Like, we have Jesus told them to go proclaim to the world the good news of salvation. What, what, what's this about listening, church? No, but, but the, okay, I do think it can be misused, misunderstood. Mm-hmm. But the truth in it is, if I want to effectively share the gospel with you, I need to know where you're at. Yeah. And the only way for me to know where you're at is to pay attention to you and listen to yeah. you. Or give you a 10-page questionnaire, have you complete it, and then I'll get back to you later once I've analyzed your results. But most of us, that option's not very right. likely. To me, there's just a word missing. A listening first church. Yes. Great. Because then you can yes. respond. Yes. Like, it's not only listening. It's listening and then responding. Yep. It's, it's listening the so they can respond most fruitfully yes. to meet you where you're at, to yes. help you grow closer to the Lord, whatever your relationship with him is yeah. like right now. Yeah. So I do think that that's and and my my go to example for this is um, we're in this Easter season here uh, the road to Emmaus story mm-hmm. from Luke chapter twenty four mm-hmm. two disciples leaving Jerusalem going to Emmaus Jesus comes alongside them um, and and he asks questions but before he asks questions he, he listens. listens so he doesn't make uh, dec- what's the, de- not declarative de- declarative st- yeah, statements? yeah. So, declarative statements. Yeah. Uh, First, he starts by asking questions, mm-hmm. but before that, he starts by listening. Yeah. So I think that's a good practice, a good, good example step. for us, yeah. too. Yeah, so. for sure. So um, that's a little bit of listening well. <laughs> Folks, uh, I hope that was of value to you. If not, it's Renee's fault. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, <laughs> and that will wrap up this episode of Ignition. Again, you can email us, ignition at sfcatholic.org, with any questions about today's episode or ideas for future ones. Until next time, may God bless you.